Hello everyone, my name is Luis Fernando Gonzalez Salazar and the theme of the project that I'm going to present is molecular imprinting polymers and their usefulness in extraction process and as, and as adjuvant in the degradation of bisphenol A by the O3 UV process. I will start talking about the emerging pollant that is bisphenol A. This compound is one of the most produced chemicals in the world with more than 7,000 kilotons worldwide this compound was initially synthesized as estrogen. With the passing of the time, it's high cap uh, to high capacity to be a functional monomer of many plastics and additives was seen. Due to its initial, initial origin, this compound is cataloged as endocrine disruptor, where later you will see its other effects on human health. Among the uses of bisphenol A are the manufacture of polycarbonate plastics, liquid containers in epoxy resins to coat metal cans, in dental monomers, plastic toys, and purchase tickets. Moving on to the negative effects on human health, which has this compound, are the following endocrine disruptor, alteration in human behavior, damage, uh, neuro neurological damage, and cardiac damage, promote cancer, and type 2 diabetes. And well, knowing that this compound is highly toxic and that this compound is found in several containers of human food and has been found in water samples, both potable and residual. That is why techniques and materials are required for the detection, quantification, elimination and degradation of these types of, of, these types of compounds. Among these are molecularly imprinting polymers. They are defined as synthetic materials with molecular recognition properties. These are synthesized by putting in contact or functional monomer, which is the main part of our polymer. The template molecule, molecule which is one of the is required to print in our polymer matrix, along with the cross-linker agent, which is responsible for giving it the morphology, porosity, and the three-dimensional structure. Also, the solvent that is responsible for dissolving all our compounds and also responsible for giving porosity to the material. Finally, the initiator is added, the one responsible for initiating the polymerization reaction. Now, once we know what the MIPS are, the part, the part, now we will see how these materials work. The mechanics is the following, uh, where you have in the instruction column in solid phase, a quantity of MIPS, where it's first conditioned with solvent, and then add the sample that contains or analyte of interest, then, wa then a wash is carried out, to eliminate the different interference components that it the sample may have, to finally perform an illusion to remove the sample and thus quantify how much of our analyte was retained in our MIP. Moving on to the methodology, we have first the synthesis of polymers, which was carried out by three methods. The first was emulsion, uh, where sodium metacrylate was added as monomer BPA as a template molecule methanol and toluene as a solvent, ADGMA as a cross-linked agent, and AIBN as an initiator. This solution I, uh, was added to the surfing solution consisting of polyvinyl alcohol and SDS. This was added by a trip. Uh, the, the reaction was left in a glycerin bath at a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius for 24 hours in nitrogen atmosphere. The following methods were in, ma as in, uh, were in bulk and co-precipitation. This followed the same methodology of the solution aid of the emulsion method, with the difference that in the co-precipitation method, five times more solvent and uh, steers is added, with the um, bulk method carry the same amount of solvent and uh, without agitation. If the part of the degradation test were carried out in a UV chamber, uh, where the variables were the amount of MIF added, the sample times, and the pH. Now, moving on to the results and discussion. Rotation try in the rotation test uh, part, it was found that the three MIPs retained more than 99% of the 1 ppm solution that was added compared to the NIP, which obtained a value of 69% demonstrating the impression of the BPA molecule on the MIPS. The results obtained in degradation experiments were observed and in the test with a pH 7 with a polymer in a minute 5. There are two peaks, one at the minute 7.47, uh, 
uh, and uh, 8.15 minutes, corresponding to the possible metabolites of VPA degradation with a high intensity. On the other hand, in the degradation test with the same pH and 10 mg of polymer, these same peaks were observed at the same time, with the difference that the intensity of, of this decreasing considerable, which indicates the absorption of these possible metabolites in the material, confirming the high specificity of the MIP before the family of the degradation products of BPA. Finally, in the water samples, BPA was found in all of these concentrations higher than the those found in the liter literature. And finally, the conclusion of the work are the next, and thank you for your attention.